I get a lot of requests for product reviews and I don't choose any of them unless it's going to be useful to me or potentially useful to you who watch my channel. Today, I'm going to take you through one of those products. It's going to be useful to me and I think you might like it as well. So let's get started. Of course, you want to know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Link Plus Link Station N1. It's a NAS that looks like a little appliance here. This particular one is a six bay NAS, uh, 16 gig of RAM, 128 gig ROM. And you can put six eight terabyte SSD, eight, or six eight terabyte SSD disks in it. Now it comes without disks in it already. So you'll have to supply those. And I'll show you here in a second where those go. But this comes with um, a HDMI port. Actually, this comes with an audio port. Uh, HDMI port, a USB, two USB-C ports, and of course a network port here, and then this is the power input for it. It's not very big at all. It looks like a little, uh, you know, like an old DVD-ROM console or something like that. Of course, on the front you have your different lights, which you really can't see here. Or maybe you can. S1, S2, M1, M2, M2, M4. So you have two bays that are regular SSDs, and then you have four NVMe slots. And then of course, you've got the power button over here. Now to put the drives in, on the front of this, there is a, uh, or on the front, you've got this little magnetic cover that comes down. And then you put in your two SSDs, two and a half inch SSDs, up to eight terabytes each. It just slides out like that. And you take uh, an SSD, in this case, this happens to be a blue, uh, Western Digital Blue, you put it in the, the, the cover here and then you put in the four screws that hold it in place. We'll pretend I did that and then you slide it in the front of the case right here and you snap it in place and you can do that with the other side as well. And then this, um, there is a USB-C port right here as well. And then you can put two of those drives in here and then if you open it up over the back here, you have four NVMe slots and these just come off like this. And then you take an NVMe and it's, uh, no, requires no screws. And I've got a WD black, a Western digital black here, an SN, come on, 770. And this is a 2280 M.2 SSD. You need to make sure you use the 2280 or it won't fit in the device and won't work. So that's what I'm using here. And all you do is you take it, just like any other NVMe, you put it in there at an angle, push down, and this little thing slides back. And all you do is just snap it in place, and there you have an NVMe in there. And so you can put one, two, three, four NVMe's up to eight terabytes each, and then you can put two SSD, 2.5 inch SSDs in the front here for another eight times two. So in all you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times eight is 64 gigabytes or terabytes of storage that this device will handle. So you have a very compact, very small unit here. It sits on the desk. In fact, here's the keyboard. I mean, I can cover it up with a keyboard. That's how small or big or whatever it is. It's pretty tiny. 64 terabytes capability here uh, of this device. It does come with, um, it comes with, um, huh, sorry, it comes with Unraid and it comes with an Unraid license or a key. And I'll show you the Unraid stuff here in just a moment. So I put the rest of the drives in. In my example here, I'm going to only have two NVMe slots, one terabyte each for a total of two terabytes. And I'm going to have um, one two terabyte SSD and another one terabyte SSD. It's because I had what I had laying around. Remember, these things are diskless, which means you have to supply all the disks for the NAS. You just get the hardware to run it. Um, so when you get it all installed and plugged into your network, you should be able to go to uh, tower.local. And when you go to tower.local, you'll have a page that looks like this. And the first thing obviously we wanna do is um, set our password and then we'll set it here. And you're going to want to start the 30 day trial. There is a card that comes with this and it talks about uh, the trial. And the recommendation here is to do the 30 day trial, try it out and everything else. And then 
there is an activation code that comes with the device on the bottom for your Unraid license or key. Um, but you don't want to start that until you've used the 30 day trial. So we're just going to go with the 30 day trial and we'll click on it over here. How about that? And then you need to start and set up an account and all that stuff. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'm going to sign in with one of my Google accounts. All right. So the trial key provides functionality of the unlicensed, unleashed license key. That's everything, right? So it uh, depends on the key you get with this. I'm not sure what it is. And then we'll attempt to automatically install your license key upon creation. We're going to confirm the trial start. All right. So the trial key is installed successfully. 30 days and four minutes. Oh, nice. An extra four minutes. All right. So first thing is um, going to main. And you can see here that we have devices in here. You can have up to 22 devices. I only have four slots, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that or set it down to four slots. And actually, I want to make this three slots, not four, because I have two drives and then I'm going to have the cache array. So parity is going to be your main parity drive. You'll notice I have a two terabyte SDA or S SD. <laughs> wow. I have a two terabyte drive and I have a one terabyte drive. You always wanna make your parity drive bigger than your other drives. So if you have mismatched sizes, make sure you make the parity the biggest one, which is that right there. Otherwise later you might have to do a migration if you change the parity drive and all that. And then I wanna have the other drive is disc one. All right, so those two are there now. Now I wanna come down here and add a pool. I'm gonna add the cache pool. I have two slots right now, so I'm just gonna have two slots. Add that right there and I'm gonna assign both of my WD blacks to the pool right there. And so now those are both there. All right, so now we're gonna click on cache over here and we're gonna set our file system type, set it to ZFS. And then because we have only two devices, we don't have a lot of options. So we're gonna just go with RAID zero for now. If you have more devices than the two devices, you might be able to use some different types of ZFS, but we are not able to do that today. So we're just gonna go with ZFS. Uh, RAID 0, and we're just going to apply that, and then we are done, and now we come over here and we start this, and you probably have to format some disks, and it also tells you the parity disk will be overwritten, that's just fine, and then we let it cook away for a little bit to do all of its stuff, and you'll see down here that it's actually starting the services. All right, so you do need to format this, like I said, so we'll go ahead and click on that, format the unmountable disks, and then we'll go ahead and start that. All this stuff is going to start happening and the drives are going to do their thing. They're going to build out and do all this stuff. And it's going to take a bit of time. So we will just wait for all of that to finish. All right. While it's doing that, obviously you don't want to have your NAS on a DHCP or, or dynamic IP address. So we're going to come over here to network settings and we're going to change that. I'm going to change the IP for address. Now, in order to be able to make these changes here, you need to make sure that over here, Docker, and VM manager are both disabled or turned off because otherwise it won't let you make these changes. So I'm gonna change this to static and I'm gonna give it an IP address that I wanna use. Now you can use the, uh, you can use the IP address that's assigned to the unit from DHCP because it, you can just type in the host name dot local and get to it. But I like to have everything on a static IP. That's something I'm gonna address or connect to from other things. I want to make sure I always have an IP address that's the same every single time because that saves me a lot of hassle. So we're just going to change this over to dot 17 and dot one. And then our DNS servers are all the same and we will apply that. And likely you're going to have a little hiccup here as it switches over to the other IP address. Unraid is not super easy out of the box. There's a lot of stuff to think about. Uh, however, it's very powerful. So once you get a hang of it, then you're able to do a lot of stuff in Unraid. Um, it's very customizable, so you can set, set up your NAS any way you want to. Uh, you can run stuff from it, just like you can like a Synology or something else. You have containers, you have apps you can install through Docker, but essentially once you get it up and running, you'll be able to configure this any way you want to. And there's lots and lots of help out on the internet related to Unraid. So just keep all of that in mind. Don't take what I say for gospel because I am learning as we go here as well. So now I've given it a static IP address and we are good to go. 
um, come back over here and see what we're doing. We're, we're going to be building this stuff for another four hours. So it's going to take a while. All right. So we have all that up. Now you want to go over here and you want to create a share. I'm just going to create one and show you a couple things. I'm going to call this one, um, my data and then minimum free space, zero primary storage. Now there's two options for this. You can either put it on the cache or the array. I'm going to start it on cache. And then my second storage, secondary storage is going to be the array. The array is the device or the two SSDs. Those are the, you know, hard drives, the SSD drives, SSD drives. And then the cache of course is the NVMe. Performance is faster when you write to and from the NVMe. Um, so what you do is you set it for cache and then you write to that. And then there's a setting where you go in here and you set it up to, or it automatically does it. And the mover action takes it from the cache and moves it to the array. And by default, I think it's at uh, 3.45 AM. And there's lots of information here uh, on that. So we'll move it uh, from primary storage to secondary storage. That's what you're seeing here. And then everything else can see, stay the same. So I'm going to add that share. And so we have one share now, and that's all I'm going to use for now. We'll leave all the rest of this the same. Uh, then you come over to apps. There's a lot of apps available. You can install the community applications plugin. And then once you do that, you're going to understand there's a third party applications. They're not maintained by Unraid, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, same thing with plugins. And then you can come over here and find all the things you want to install in here. There is a home assistant container. If you want to install that, this is the official home assistant container for Unraid. So if you're interested in running home assistant, and if you're watching my channel, you probably are, then it is, uh, you're able to go ahead and do this. The maintainer is Paulus. Um, so you notice earlier that I was, um, messing with the network settings, I turned off the Docker service. So before we can install this, I actually have to go back over here to settings, over here to Docker. I need to go ahead and enable it again. Oops, how about we do this? Enable it and apply. And the default app data storage location is right here. So I'm gonna go back over here and find that again. And now that I'm running it, I can go ahead and click on install. And then here is the location of the repository. Network type is host. That's fine for now. Um, and then mount. So I'll leave it as default for now. There's more settings you can play with. Uh, there's Docker allocations, etc. None of those seem to be available. And we will apply. And it's going to build the entire Home Assistant set up here for us. All right, so that's all done and it's running. So now if we go over here to the dashboard and we look at our Docker container, you'll see here Home Assistant container is running and we can go to the web UI directly from here. And now it's gonna bring us into the setup for Home Assistant and you can go through all that. Everybody knows how that works if you're running Home Assistant already. So there it is, it's easy enough to do that. Now, if I want to go back over here to my shares, by the way, and I have uh, my data here, if I click on this and I come down here and I want to export it and say yes, and I can apply that, this is SMB. So we'll map a network drive on my local PC here and we'll put in the IP address of the NAS, 172.31.10. Dot 17. That's why I like to have an IP address assigned. So I know what it is every single time. We're going to browse that and you'll see here that it actually shows the my data folder that we just enabled there. We'll say, okay, we'll finish that. And then if we come over here to drive M, there's the my data folder. Let's go back here. You'll see that there is basically a terabyte free which is the size of our array that we built out. So we have one terabyte available on the M drive and then you would put your files in here. And that's the point of a NAS is to be able to use it as a network attached storage device. So it's basically a disk on the network. So this is a key feature of that link 
station. Again, this is <laughs> this is barely scratching the surface. Obviously, you can go through here and see there are a lot of things that you can do here with this. It's going to be a lot of fun to play with. Uh, this is just a quick overview. It's not meant to explain to you how to use Unraid or anything else. This is the link station. The N1 is a very capable NAS. Um, it's it's uh, very small. It's very quiet. It's been sitting on the desk the entire time I've been filming this video. It's probably less than two feet from the microphone. I can't hear it at all. I'm sure you can't. Hopefully, there's a little bit of a vibration in there from, I guess, an internal fan or something. But uh, other than that, um, it's super quiet. doesn't make any bit of noise. Tiny. It looks like a piece of um, finished equipment, not a data center device. So you could put it out where people can see it without thinking about or, or worrying about someone in the household saying, look at all this networking gear and equipment we have here. It looks like a piece of uh, furniture, no, not furniture. It looks like a console, a game console, or a, you know, a device, a streaming device or whatever else. So it looks like it belongs. Anyway, um, I feel like I was all over the place with the video, but I hope you get an idea that this link station here is super nice. Um, before I do go, I do want to talk through a couple of things on here and just go over some um, features on it. It's a uh, full featured Docker and virtualization it comes with Unraid license, one click deployment. It provides uh, six bay NAS storage. So you have four PCIe, which I showed you, uh, two SSD slots, a two and a half gig ethernet. I didn't mention that it is 2.5 gig ethernet port, one USB-C port, an audio port, an HDMI port, and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. Uh, it has an Intel Celeron in 5105. It has four core, 16 gig memory, 128 gig of ROM, two gigahertz base frequency, 2.9 gig burst frequency. It does have Bluetooth 5, 2, and Wi Fi 6. Um, so if you had to run Wi Fi on it, you could. Uh, the Wi Fi 6 and Bluetooth features are not compatible with Unraid right now. So I just lied. You can't really do that. Users need to run a VM to use these. So you can utilize the functionality of those two if you set up a VM for that. So yeah, that is the Link Station uh, N1 from Link Plus. Finally, should mention that Link's, Link uh, Plus sent this to me uh, to look at, to talk to you about it. And again, that's uh, what I said at the beginning. I don't review things unless it's something I find useful. And definitely this is something that I'm gonna use. It'll sit on my desk here. All right, I've talked enough, I've said enough, I've rambled enough and, and made a mess of this video. So if you're still watching, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna cut it right here and we will see you on the next one.